Okay, with the ledger bolted to the house and the beam in place, it's time to set some floor joists. That begins with laying out the beam to match the layout on the ledger. Rick works his way down the beam one way, making marks, and he works his way back, squaring off those layout marks and indicating which side of the line the joist will sit on with an X. After the joists are tacked in place, they'll add joist hangers. But first, they set an outer joist and use that as a brace to square up the beam. It's not structurally critical, but Ben likes to build things as if he cares, so they do this. Look at this show of accuracy. Notice how many times Rick misses the nail he's swinging at. None. He doesn't miss it at all. Now that's hitting the nail on the head. To set the rest of the joists, Ben places the top flush with the flashing, and then he toenails it through the top of the joist into the ledger. The joists are crowned up and tacked in place. At the outer end, they're toenailed into the beam. Before Ben paints himself into a corner, he works his way out. This last joist is too close to the wall to fit a nail gun, so he installs a joist hanger before the joist. And before installing that joist, he bolts that side ledger to the house. Now he can slip that last joist into place and nail it off. He distributes the joist hangers across the deck joists and gets to installing them. Here's where the little toenail comes in handy. Toenails are great for adjusting the placement of a framing member. Positive placement nailers make much quicker work of this than Tico nails and hammers do, too. As Ben works his way down the line, Rick is cutting blocks to install over the beam between the joists. Okay, here's a great reason to keep your hands away from the nail zone. This nail hit something hard and curled 90 degrees shooting out the side of the block. Ben toenails one end of the joist and face nails the opposite end. Now he can toenail the rest of the block. With the blocks in place, Rick cuts the joist to length. One advantage of this is that you can cut the length to perfectly match the decking width. You just have to do a little math. Snapping a line and marking the joists after they're installed is a good way to make sure the outer rim is perfectly straight. Or at least as straight as the carpenters can cut. Which looks to be perfectly straight in this case. Speaking of the rim joist, it's time to add that now. They look for a relatively straight plank to start with, but regardless, Ben's going to end up working one end with a nail gun while Rick drives the other end oh, yeah, just a up or down a little bit more. Yep. to make it right. Up. Inevitably, there'll be a problem joist which may be squashed into submission with a clamp. held tight with nails. The last thing these guys are going to do before their morning coffee break is to install the posts. The local inspector, who'd been really cool up to now, wandered by the other morning and told Ben that he'd need to add a bunch of brackets to the each deck post. So the guys are doing that now. The post is sandwiched between two blocks and a joist. There's also a little block below the bracket but they're not going to fasten that home until the bracket is set. Tony pokes the carriage bolt through, slips the bracket on, and gets the nut started. He tightens the bolt home, 
taps the bottom block into place and screws the bracket into the block. So that's one post down and seven to go before the deck is ready for decking. 